Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuan. Let's meet these two Stegosaurus, Biba and Rook. Stegosaurus is a well-known herbivorous dinosaur. When it comes to herbivorous dinosaurs, people often recall these images, long-necked sauropods, horned ceratopsians, duck-billed hydrosaurs, and stegosaurians. Stegosaurians are pretty representative and featured by the bony plates standing along their backs, which has never been found in any other animal. This is the most fantastic part of this animal. Today, let's talk about some details about Stegosaurus and the scientific basis we adopted in its restoration. First, let's take a look at its body. Its whole body looks like this, the forelimbs are short, and the hind limbs are relatively long. When Stegosaurus was first discovered and studied, researchers initially thought it was a bipedal animal. As a result, you can see that Stegosaurus walked on two hind legs in some of the earliest restorations. The bony plates also greatly puzzled scientists at the time. The earliest restorations depicted the Stegosaurus looking like a pangolin, with these bony plates adhering to the body resembling scales and the spikes on the tail protruding from them and pointing backward. Further research revealed that both lateral sides of bony plates did not adhere to the skin. Instead, traces adhering to the skin were found at their bottom. It was then determined that these bony plates grew vertically on the back like an iguana's spikes. However, there has been a long-standing debate about how these bony plates grew on the back. At first, people arranged them in a single row along the back's midline. Later, in some specimens, researchers discovered that placing all the bony plates in a single row would make the length exceed the animal's body, suggesting that this arrangement was incorrect. So, scientists proposed that these plates were arranged in two rows, which raised another issue. No two identical bony plates have been collected on the same individual, indicating that the bony plates might not be symmetrical. This problem has baffled scientists for a long time. Finally, alternatively arranged bony plates were unearthed in some better preserved articulated Stegosaurus specimens, such as the one on which this model is based. That specimen, nicknamed Roadkill, is a famous adult Stegosaurus about 6 meters long. Its bony plates are also the largest among all Stegosaurus specimens. The biggest bony plate on its back is quite broad, and nearly one meter tall. This Stegosaurus specimen lets us know that the dorsal bony plates of this dinosaur were distributed alternatively. The bony plates were relatively small, slender, and shaped like a human palm at the head, then got bigger and bigger toward the back, with the widest located at the pelvis showing a large rhombus or pentagon shape, and gradually merged into one row at the end of the tail. Some early restorations often made the two rows of bony plates widely spaced. We carefully examined the bony plate's roots, and discovered that the surface connected to the skin was slant, indicating that this surface adhered to the spine, and the distance between the two rows was just the narrow width of the sandwiched spine. Therefore, the two bony plates of Stegosaurus were quite close to each other. From above, you can see its bony plates are arranged in two rows at the front, then merge into a single row at the end of the tail, a bit like the skirts on a crocodile. Besides the bony plates, Stegosaurus also had four tail spikes. At first, people didn't know where they were located. Later on, the shape of the tail spike's root was found to match the end of its tail, so they were positioned on the tail end. However, the four tail spikes were facing upward in the early restorations. In fact, the staff at the time had noticed that if the four tail spikes faced upward, they couldn't fit tightly with the tailbone. Some people raised the possibility that they might extend horizontally. Still, no one restored them that way because everyone was conditioned to believe the tail spikes and bony plates were pointing in the same direction. Only later, the discoveries of relatively intact specimens, including the road kill just mentioned, demonstrated that the tail spikes did extend horizontally to both sides.
Next is the number of tail spikes and bony plates. People initially thought there were eight tail spikes as they found many in a sizable chaotic pile of bones, so they believed that Stegosaurus might have about eight tail spikes. Later, many unearthed intact Stegosaurus specimens revealed that there were actually four tail spikes. Then, let's look at the number of bony plates. Many well-preserved whole-body Stegosaurus skeletons showed us a varied number of bony plates. For example, the roadkill specimen had 17 bony plates, while another famous specimen, Sophie, had 22 bony plates, which is a relatively large number. Therefore, the number of bony plates in Stegosaurus is generally around 20. The roadkill specimen had fewer bony plates because they were wider. Now that we mention the bony plates, we have to talk about their function. The role the bony plates played has long been controversial. One of the most intuitive functions is that they seem defensive because of their sharp shape, which was also people's first impression of them since their discovery. However, this function has been questioned for a long time in the last century. First of all, the bony plates are a type of osteoderms. In the scientific description, they are called dermal bones, which are the bony structures that develop in the dermal layer of the skin, and they are usually not connected to the bone of the body, indicating that the bony plates are not very strong. When the dinosaur walked, these bony plates might slightly sway as they were only connected to the body by the skin. If a carnivorous dinosaur bit and tore hard, it might pull off the bony plate. So, this theory has long been debated. Then, someone studied the surface structure of the bony plates and found many delicate grooves. So they suggested that blood vessels were accommodated in these grooves when the dinosaur was alive. As a result, these bony plates were long thought to be used to regulate the body temperature. Specifically, if the sun shone down, and the bony plates faced the sun to heat up the interior blood. The stegosaurus would be more flexible after the warm blood ran throughout the body. When the dinosaur faced the wind, the wind that blew through the two rows of bony plates would cool down the blood, similar to an air conditioning system. However, in the past decade or so, people have used modern technology to measure bony plates more accurately and found that the plate surfaces were not used to accommodate blood vessels, but to attach keratin. This structure has also been seen in its close relative, Hesperosaurus. Imprints have been found on the bony plate fossils of Hesperosaurus, which display that their surface is with smooth, keratinous structures and sharp edges. The sharp edges indicate they can still be somewhat defensive. In addition, when people thought that the surface might accommodate the blood vessels, some scientists once suggested that the dinosaur might change the color of the blood vessels. If it was in danger, blood would merge into the blood vessels, and the entire bony plate might suddenly change from yellow to red to play the role of intimidation. In fact, we now think this view is unreasonable because the surface has been confirmed to be covered with a keratinous structure, and there were no blood vessels inside. Even if there were blood vessels, the keratin structure could not change color due to increased blood. The keratin itself has bright colors. However, the bony plate possibly indeed had blood vessels inside because people used 3D technology to scan the interior and found a tree-like cavity. Of course, people hold different opinions about the function of this cavity. Some people believe blood ran through it and provided nutrients to the bony plate. The latest theory argues that the cavities in the bony plates of female Stegosaurus were often larger because the females might use the bony plates to store calcium. When the females lay eggs, they would use blood to absorb all the stored calcium to make eggshells. Next, let's take a look at its body shape. Stegosaurus had short forelimbs and long hind limbs, but the position of its joints was the decisive factor in preventing it from falling over when walking. In the past, people believed that an animal with short forelimbs and long hind limbs might fall over because the forelimbs move faster and the hind limbs move slower. But that's not the case. From this model, 
You can see that the joints it often uses in walking are the knee joints of its hind legs and the joints of the upper arms. These two joints are at the same level. Therefore, the entire forelimbs might be moving when it walked. Our current research also believes that the greater trochanter of the stegosaurus hind limbs could not move in a large range, especially toward the front, so the knee joint must move more frequently. In this way, when it walked back and forth, it would use the entire forelimb and half of the hind limb. Regarding how stegosaurians walked, although we now know they were quadrupedal animals, some footprints displayed that stegosaurians might walk on two hind legs for short distances. A set of footprints with only two hind feet was once discovered, proving that at least Stegosaurus or its close relatives could walk on two hind legs. The head of Stegosaurus was relatively slender, the teeth in its mouth were tiny, and the anterior of its mouth was beaked. Debate about this beak structure also exists because the foreend of the Stegosaurus skull fossil only shows the lower jaw preserved the structure that used to fix the horny beak and no such trace in the upper jaw. Therefore, some restorations made the front end of the upper jaw beakless, entirely covered with scales, and the lower jaw with a pointed beak. Thus, some people believe that Stegosaurus might use its lower jaw as a shovel-like structure to dig out roots and chew them. In fact, it might also have a beak on the upper jaw, but it is not that pronounced because the beak structure might not leave traces on the skeleton, so we still restored it with the appearance of having upper and lower beaks. It would use these two beaks to pick leaves as a large amount of stomach content fossils of Stegosaurus shows that it preferred to eat some relatively tender plants. There was a string of structures, called the gula armor under its throat, which was composed of numerous osteoderms that integrated like chainmail to form a defense to protect the neck. Many skin fossils of Stegosaurus and other Stegosaurians have been discovered. The most famous ones are some semi-mummified specimens, preserved in the ribs of some Stegosaurus specimens in North America. These specimens show that Stegosaurus was covered in delicate, millimeter-sized scales, which were evenly spaced with larger scales, as shown in this model. In addition to Stegosaurus, Another stegosaurian called Gigant Spinosaurus was discovered in Da Shan Pu, Dizagong. It had a huge spike on its shoulder, and the same skin impression was found around it. An advanced stegosaurian from the Cretaceous period has recently been discovered in western Liaoning, China. A large piece of its skin was preserved intact, and showed the same structure, indicating that this stegosaurian might have similar features all over its body. In the past, we always thought that Stegosaurus was an animal with a relatively narrow body. In recent years, in-depth research on its skeleton has revealed that its body was quite broad. Then, let's look at this Stegosaurus cub. There are not many fossil materials of juvenile Stegosaurus. When restoring this cub, we can only base on a few specimens, such as the juvenile specimen in the American Museum of Natural History. From that specimen, we can see its limbs are relatively slender and short, and its hind limbs are not very long. Its bony plate fossils may not have been preserved, but based on the growth characteristics of this type of dinosaur, the juveniles may have somewhat square and not so sharp bony plates, which would not look that way until adulthood. In addition, some footprint fossils show that juvenile dinosaurs might often use two hind legs to walk as their bodies are lighter. Therefore, when we restored this Stegosaurus cub, we adopted a standing posture like this to let it walk on its hind legs. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Bieber and Rook the Stegosaurus. Thank you all.